Here to give us his take on my interview with the president and much more is former Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives and the author of the new book, Trump and the American Future, Solving the Great Problems of Our Time. Would you welcome Newt Gingrich back to the program? Mr. Speaker, thank you for being here. I want to get your reaction to the news the president broke with us regarding the protection of statues and monuments via an executive order. He later announced that he means to use the Veterans Memorial Preservation Act. Listen. We're looking at long-term sentences under the act. We have a very specific Monuments Act, and we are looking at long-term jail sentences for these vandals and these hoodlums and these anarchists and agitators, and call them whatever you want. I want to also say this. If the state governments, because you see them all over in Seattle, they're very weak. And in Minnesota, they might need help. If they need help, the federal government is willing to help them. If these hoodlums come around... Newt, the Veterans Memorial Preservation Act only applies to military monuments on public property. That wouldn't necessarily protect St. Junipero Tessera or Thomas Jefferson, would it? Well, I think it depends on how you want to interpret military. Um, they, they may end up in court fighting over it. But it's certainly the case mm -hmm. of Jefferson, uh, who had been... Uh, an officer in the Revolutionary War, I think you could cover him without much of a stretch. All of the early presidents had been in the military. So, you know, and certainly General Grant uh, would have been covered by that. He's been one mm -hmm. of the targets. But you know, what I think uh, is amazing, Raymond, is the contrast between Governor Cuomo saying yesterday that, oh, if people want to break up statues, that's fine, because it probably helps them get their feelings out. And President Trump saying correctly, this is, this is about property, and it's about people having made decisions. And no, barbarians and vandals don't have a right to go around destroying things. Hmm. Uh, Newt, as a historian, this has got to strike you particularly, because I, I remember during your entire tenure as speaker, you would go out of your way to find the historical precedent and, and to put things in context, things you were uh, doing in Congress, certain policies or events that were underway. Uh, it, give me your sense of what this means from a sociological point of view, from a historical point of view. When you have Americans willy-nilly, without, without votes, without any consideration, just throwing ropes over these statues and yanking them down, what's happening? What does that tell you about where Americans are or pieces of America are at this moment? Well, I think there, there are three different things coming together. One is, as I wrote in a recent newsletter, you have three generations of brainwashing uh, into left-wing ideas, uh, so they actually mm -hmm. feel empowered to hate America, because that's what their professors have taught them. Uh, the second is you have uh, people who, like Antifa, who really are organized, hardened anti-Americans, and they deliberately want to mm -hmm. go out and do this. And the third is you have just sort of a criminal element. I mean, there are people who, you know, it's summertime, it's a cheap date, let's go destroy a statue, uh, or let's mm -hmm. go raid a Nike store. I mean, you guys remember the pictures of people coming down Fifth Avenue, breaking into those stores? They were on a commercial venture. They were out grabbing all sorts of goodies. Uh, so I think all three of those come together. And then, as the president pointed out, you have such weak left-wing leaders in most of these cities that it is mm. astonishing how bad they are. Uh, as you heard, President Trump Newt earlier also weighed in on the Supreme Court's DACA ruling. He said the Dreamers would be taken care of. What would you advise the president to do with the DACA Dreamers? And what does his resubmitting an end to DACA accomplish? Well, I think that, that the people who actually did come here at a very, very early age, many of whom no longer speak any language but English, a number of whom have mm -hmm. been here long enough to you know, graduate from high school as valedictorians, which real human beings, uh, a priest in Atlanta uh, who came as a DACA. Um, I think the president will be well put to find a way to say to Congress, here's a very narrowly drawn bill that takes care of everybody who's legitimately came here as a young child. I will sign it if you'll pass it. Now, don't play games with it, yes or no. Would you like to offer them a permanent future? Uh, and don't play, don't play political games with it. And put the burden right mm -hmm. directly back on the Mm -hmm. And limited to the people who are already here. Limited to people who came here at a very early age and who legitimately have spent virtually all their life here. I would also say 
You can instruct ICE to make uh, violent criminals, drug dealers, gang members your primary uh, targets, and you'll never get to a DACA person unless they're very rare. They're very rare DACA people who get in that kind of trouble. So you would basically not be targeting DACA uh, dreamers because you would be going after other people. And just say that, mm-hmm. you know, and just say, you know, this is not what we're going to We're not in the business of tracking down somebody who had, came here at three years of age and is now 22. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want your reaction, Newt, to the question I asked the president regarding the pro-life cause, uh, that despite President Trump's position on life issues as a non-Catholic, many Catholics and evangelicals consider Joe Biden to be truly pro-life. Now, is President Trump the most pro-life president in history as he maintains, or do the Biden supporters have a point here? Well, I don't think the Biden supporters have any point. Uh, Biden has, is a Catholic. In fact, Clinton and I have been at mass with him. Uh, but the fact is that Biden's position will be the position of the left wing of the Democratic Party, which is abortion paid for by the taxpayers. He said he would sign Nancy Pelosi's $3 trillion bill, which provides for tax paid abortions in the ninth month as a fundamental mm-hmm. break with everything we've ever said about it. So functionally, Biden will be a very pro-abortion president, no matter what he tells you about his personal feelings. Mm -hmm. Now, I I took a lot of heat, Newt, uh, from a very small but vocal progressive Catholic circle for daring to ask that pro-life question of the president. They claim I should have corrected Trump when he supported the death penalty or echoed his support of the death penalty. But excuse me, the president, first of all, is not Catholic, and my job is not to share my position or anybody else's position with him, period. Barack Obama supported the death penalty. Biden, until just recently, after a lifetime of support, said he would like to see it end. Uh, But let's talk about abortion. You mentioned Joe Biden. He's a Catholic. He's committed to abortion on demand. How do you think that will impact the race and the Catholic support of his candidacy, or lack thereof? Well, look, I think for people who care deeply about the right to life, uh, they're going to very rapidly realize that they can't possibly be for Biden, uh, or frankly, for the Democratic Party, which in places like New York is now, in effect, legalizing infanticide. Uh, The governor of Virginia, a Democrat who said, well, we want to keep the baby comfortable for a day or two while we decide whether or not to kill it after it's born. I mean, this is infanticide. I would... When I was young, it would have been unimaginable. You'd have thought that was in some weird, strange, barbaric country. But now it's the left wing of the Democratic Party. Uh, and so I think that uh, people people who are serious about right to life are virtually all going to end up voting for Trump. Yeah. Very quickly, Newt, speaking of life issues, what do you make of Planned Parenthood urging American businesses this week to offer free birth control coverage to combat systemic racism? Well, I think it's very ironic because Planned Parenthood was founded by a person who believed in eugenics and actually wanted to have Planned Parenthood eliminate inferior races. Go back and look at the 1920s Mm. and look at what she wrote and said. Uh, it's, It's bizarre. Yeah. And that Margaret Sanger statue is still standing in New York. That also is very bizarre to me. I also asked President Trump about the push for mail-in balloting uh, for this November's election. He told me it was a recipe for massive voter fraud. Do you agree? Or is this something that's necessary, given the public safety concerns we're seeing? Well, the places that have actually held elections have had no problems. You know, we've had special elections in Wisconsin and New York, just had elections yesterday in several states. Uh, and they're able to deal with it. The Democrats, and, and let me draw a distinction. We've always had absentee voting. Uh, the military has always voted, sent in a ballot, but they've been very right. carefully controlled. That in, in Pelosi's $3 trillion bill, they have a provision for a totally uncontrolled election where you won't, you can't ask for the identity of the person. You can't ask for proof that they are who they are. You can't ask where they live. They can, they can do uh, ballot harvesting. So somebody can go through the nursing home and pick up 80 or 90 ballots. Uh, I mean, this is an invitation mm. to a corrupt, dishonest election. Let's talk about your new book, Trump and the American Future. How would you describe the conflict we're seeing in America today? You list in the book a number of accomplishments uh, the, the president has, has already achieved, and I want to get to that in a moment, but describe that conflict as it exists today in American life. Yeah, this is the biggest choice since Abraham Lincoln in 1860. In 160 years, 
We have never had this big a difference. If you take the Pelosi, Schumer, Biden team, what they stand for, and then you take the Trump, McConnell, McCarthy team and what they stand for, you're talking about two totally different Americas. Uh, if, if Schumer and Pelosi and Biden win, within a year or two, they will turn the country into a cross between California and Seattle. Uh, we will no longer recognize it as what was historically called America. Uh, and you see this in Pelosi's $3 trillion bill, which is just filled with radicalism. Uh, so I think that I, I, I literally don't know of any election uh, that is as huge a gap as we're about to see. And I'm frankly very worried about it. I mean, you have a president who said to carry a Chinese virus, a deliberately created depression as a public health measure, uh, mm -hmm. huge conflict cities. I mean, Trump has got a lot on his shoulders while being attacked by 93% of the news media. So uh, this is going to be quite a campaign. I think we can win it. I think, in fact, I think we probably will win it. But it's going to be amazing. You write that President Trump has been profoundly and consistently committed to fighting for religious liberty, Newt. You write he has argued that religious beliefs are as legitimate as sexual orientations. In all these steps, he angers the secular left, including many in newsrooms across the country. A key part of the reelection campaign in the second term will be adapting to and getting ahead of these attacks. Now, Newt Gingrich, why has religious liberty become a cornerstone issue for this president, despite the animosity it causes in some circles? Well, I think there's a difference between religiosity, uh, mm -hmm. how often do you go to church, and what do you have in your heart? And I think he was very, very deeply moved uh, by his visit to Warsaw and his understanding of John Paul II. And I think that that actually had a huge impact on him and his understanding mm -hmm that if you don't have religious freedom, in the long run, you don't have any freedom. And I think that was a sincere intellectual conversion about the, the way the world works. Mm -hmm. oh, Newt, you write about the U.S.-China relationship in your book, and this is how you put it. Our misdiagnosis of the Chinese Communist Party and its totalitarian system has now created serious challenges for the United States. These challenges threaten our national security, interests, and values. The Chinese Communist Party has outlined 10 major industries that it aims to dominate under its Made in China 2025 plan, including biopharmaceuticals and high-performance medical devices, next-generation information technology, aerospace and aviation equipment, maritime engineering equipment, and high-tech maritime vessel manufacturing. Newt, has the COVID pandemic slowed China's progress or ambitions at all? Well, I, first of all, I, I think it's an example of political correctness that what should have been either a Chinese virus or a Wuhan virus became COVID-19 in order to make the Chinese feel better. Uh, but the truth mm -hmm. is it's a Chinese virus. And the Chinese lied about it. And their behavior has cost hundreds of thousands of lives and trillions of dollars of wealth precisely because the Chinese communist dictatorship lied to the world. Uh, I don't think that that has slowed them down. I think what slowed them down is people have come to understand how profoundly dishonest they were. And people then started looking at other places where they're dishonest. And you now see a, a growing sort of repulsion away from the Chinese in Australia, in Canada, in Great Britain, mm -hmm. in India, where they, in 20 Indian soldiers were killed a week ago. Uh, I saw that. It was just a there's just a general sense that this is a country that is reaching to control all of us and that the rest of us have an interest in banding together to not let them get away with it. Hmm. Before I let you go, Newt, what do you see as the greatest challenge to American survival now? Our education system. I think our education system is hmm. so bad, both in that from K through 12, there are millions of young children being cheated by unionized government schools that fail totally. And then beyond that, in college and graduate school, we have students who are being totally misinformed and told things that are just plain not true. It's the combination yeah. of the two that makes it so difficult. Yeah, a lot of that we're seeing play out on the streets, certainly here in America, but really around the world, Newt, you're seeing this, this uh, bl right. historical blindness. I mean, it's unbelievable. Newt Gingrich, thank you so much for being here. Thank Hope you. to see you soon. Trump and the American Future, Solving the Great Problems of Our Time by Newt Gingrich is available in bookstores everywhere and online. Thank you, Newt.